Hola, estudiantes. Uh, this is Mr. Bickford bringing you Chapter 4, Lesson 3. And the topic of today's lesson is how to multiply fractions. Uh, I'm actually going to show you uh, a couple of different ways. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, the first example we're going to do is how would you multiply How would you multiply one half times three fifths? And before um, I work on that problem, I also just want to remind you that the word of uh, also means multiplying in math. So if you were uh, asked to try and figure out what is half of three fifths, that is going to be the same thing. Also, uh, we talked about this in a previous lesson. The order of multiplying doesn't work or doesn't matter. So one half times three fifths, we could switch those around using the commutative property, which uh, we covered in a previous lesson. You could do three fifths times one half. The order of multiplying does not matter. Uh, same with addition. Uh, subtraction and division, order does matter. Uh, so one half times three fifths. So the first strategy I'm going to show you is to build a model. Okay, and you can think of this strategy as building a brownie pan model. Uh, that's the way I like to think of it. So I'm actually going to use the boxes here. There's actually boxes here. I'm not sure if you can see them. They're pretty light, but I'm going to model a brownie pan uh, and I'm gonna show on one dimension I'm gonna show three-fifths of the brownie pan and the other uh, dimension I'm gonna show one-half and I'll actually draw in the lines so that you can see them I'm not sure if you can see the grid lines on here uh, alright so again in one dimension on, along one side of the brownie pan, I'm going to model three-fifths, and then along the other dimension, I'm going to model one-half. Here's what this looks like. And again, I'm using the grid boxes, even if you can't see them, which I'll draw in. So there's my brownie pan, and along this dimension, I'm going to model three-fifths. So there's three-fifths of the brownie pan, and I'm going to shade in three of those. So there is three-fifths of the brownie pan, and then along this side, I'm going to model one-half of the brownie pan. But I'm actually going to show another brownie pan over here, the exact same brownie pan, but over here I'm not going to have these lines, I'm just going to model the half over here. So here's three-fifths, and over here I'm going to model half of the brownie pan. So here's what that looks like. Here's a half. Here's three-fifths. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brownie pan and I'm going to overlay it on top of this one. So now I'm going to add that line, which is Gonna, sh gonna allow me to show half of the brownie pan in this direction using rows, not columns. So I've got three-fifths in columns and I'm gonna have one-half in rows. So now I'm gonna add that and I'm going to shade in a half of the brownie pan.
And here is my answer. The, the boxes that uh, are double shaded give me my answer. So one half times three fifths, look at my model. What's double shaded? The, the brownies that are double shaded would be this one, this one, and this one. And I'm looking at my whole pan now. So the double shaded brownies are one, two, three out of how many brownies are in this whole pan? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So the answer is one half times three fifths equals three tenths. And again, how I get this is the double shaded brownies. One, two, three out of in my whole pan, two, four, six, eight, ten. So that is one way to uh, multiply fractions is to build a model. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to put a huge rectangle around this strategy. Make this yellow. So this is one strategy that you can use today. You can build a model. And again, you're going to model one fraction with columns, and you're going to model the other fraction in rows, put them on top of each other, and the double shaded brownies give you your answer. All right, strategy number two. The next strategy we're going to talk about, we're going to use this example. How would you multiply 4 ninths times 3 eighths? Okay, now for this next example, we're going to call this use an equation. Most kids like this, this uh, strategy better, but if building a model uh, if you like that one, go for it. Uh, use an equation. Here's what this looks like. I'm going to copy my problem. 4 ninths times 3 eighths. So now I've got a fraction multiplied by another fraction. All you do if you're going to use an equation is you model, you multiply the numerator times numerator and the de over the denominator times denominator. So it really is just multiplying straight across. I'm going to multiply 4 times 3 over 9 times 8. And that's going to give me my answer. 4 times 3 is 12. 9 times 8 is 72. Now, I need to simplify that answer. It's not correct yet. Well, it's correct, it's just not simplified. I notice that both of these are even, so right away I know that I can divide them by 2, which is taking half of each one. Half of 12 is 6. Half of 72 is 36. And I notice they're still even. 6 and 36 are even, so I can divide them by 2 again. Half of 6 is 3. Half of 36 is 18. Uh, I can still simplify that. What goes into 3 and 18 is 3. So divide by 3. Divide by 3. How many 3's go into 3? 1. How many 3's go into 18? 6. That I can't simplify anymore. So my final answer is 1 sixth. So a lot of simplifying on this problem. But again, the big idea is if you're using an equation, you just multiply across. 4 times 3, numerator times numerator, over denominator times denominator. So I'm going to highlight this part right here. This is what you do. And for this strategy, I'm just going to put 
highlight a box or a rectangle rather around this strategy. Use an equation. And let's see, can I squeak in a line right there? So multiplying fractions, use an equation, numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator. And then you may have simplifying to do. OK, the last thing I wanted to show you is something that, if you get used to doing this, uh, makes your life a lot easier. As you can see, we had wound up with pretty big numbers right here, 12 over 72, and we had a lot of simplifying. So I'm going to show you something that hopefully you can get used to doing this. And what that is, is simplifying or simplify before multiplying. If you can get used to doing this, it makes your life a lot easier. Simplify before multiplying. I'm going to look at the same problem. 4 ninths times 3 eighths. And again, what I would do for that is multiply numerators over multiplying denominators. Now, if you're going to use this strategy, or this tip rather, what you need is a common factor for any numerator and any denominator. But it has to be a common factor of a numerator and a denominator. So I'm going to write that here. Common factor of a numerator with a denominator. It can be any numerator, but it has to be with a denominator. So uh, another way of saying that is it has to be a factor of a top number and a bottom number, but it could be this numerator and this denominator, this numerator with this denominator, or any combination as long as it's a top number and a bottom number. So here's the real key. Common factor of a numerator with a denominator. It's got to be that. So if I look here, these are easier numbers. They're smaller than these numbers, 12 over 72. Do you see any common factors with a numerator and a denominator? Well, hopefully you do. Here's a, here's a top number. What do you see on the, with a bottom number that has a common factor? 4 and 8. 4 goes into both of those, so I'm going to divide this by 4, and I would get 1. I'm going to divide this by 4, and I'm going to get 2. I also see that 3, here's a numerator, and here's a denominator, 3 and 9. What goes into 3 and 9? 3 does. So I'm going to divide both of these by 3. So I'm divide, 3 divided by 3 turns into 1, and 9 divided by 3 turns into 3. And if I saw more simplifying with a numerator and a denominator, I could do it. I don't see any, though. So now I'm going to multiply with these simplified numbers. And I would get 1 times 1 is 1, and 3 times 2 is 6. I get the exact same thing that I had here. The advantage of doing it this way is I'm simplifying with much smaller numbers right here. I don't have to deal with big numbers like a 12 and 72. So if you can get used to simplifying right here first before you multiply, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So I'm going to highlight this strategy, different color. And that does it for uh, Chapter 4, Lesson 3. Uh, your hidden treasure for today is 
It's a problem that's back in your workbook. So here it is. If you look back on page 14 in your workbook, you'll see uh, power-up questions. And question number 27, power-up question number 27 is solving that, being able to explain it, is your hidden treasure for this lesson. That does it for lesson three. I will see you shortly for lesson four.